Hey guys, we are back for game five, and for a second week in a row, I am hoping to salvage a mediocre 2 3. I have mulliganed down to six cards and have a bit of a slow start, but a powerful one. So I think on six cards I will keep and hope to find some early action. Uh, this hand uh, showcases some potential deck design problems here, but. Um... Despite it being awkward, I think this is a pretty decent hand. If we draw any fetch land, we should be good. Okay, I'll scry. And that is not what we need right now, so I'll put it at the bottom. And I'll play a mountain pass. Okay, not the worst draw. Still awkward, though. This is going to get a basic planes. Okay, that is pretty good. So, we will play a Monas Blood St. Meyer, Swiss Spear, Attack Fallen. 19. Right on time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's still fine, I suppose. Trigger. 22. Your turn. And step all fetch to 19. Had the guy in turn 2 every game. Yeah, I, I did board in a third Russian Cleric for this game five. It's It's been pretty good. Yeah, better than I thought it would be. Yeah, same. So 19 to 22 right now? Correct. Oh. That is interesting, but I still think... Block. Okay, you got me. I'm going to painful threes for three. Okay. 16. You can go. Okay. Um, I think I'm just fine just playing this and leaving it exposed. I think it's still better than just playing this. Although that might not actually be the case. Maybe I do just want to play the cut through this turn. I don't really want to give Ross an opportunity to remove this and not get any value, so th this might be wrong, but we're going to play cut through it and pass the turn. This is going to get a land. Drop. That is a little interesting. Now, we have the option of casting these or some combination of these. Um, honestly, I think just getting this into play is going to be best. So, play P and Kieran, get some Thopters. Okay. You can go. Pretty scary. This gives us a little, few more options on later turns, just getting our expensive card into play. Okay, Hopefully well... he doesn't just collect a company us into oblivion, but... It looked like I was about to assemble a mana base from 2002, but we drew a fetch land. And I will certainly take this opportunity while I can to resolve my collected company. Yep. That's what I was afraid of. So this bag is not particularly good since Ross just played a Pia. So I think, although, hmm, if it, if it eats a Thopter, that's not the worst since it can help to protect this from Pia's ability. So maybe I do actually just want to take Fleshbag Marauder. And if it removes a flyer, then the ability of this is not as necessary, I suppose. So yeah, whatever, I'm fine with this. And then I will trigger Fleshbag Marauder, I'll sacrifice itself. Okay, now my choice of what to sacrifice is somewhat interesting. 
I definitely want to keep P and Kieran around because I need to kill his Jace. Given that, I honestly don't think the Swift Spear is going to do much over the coming turns. So I think I'm just going to sacrifice it. Okay, and then I cut through a trigger. Sure. I'm at 15. 22, 15. 22. And go ahead. Well, that was pretty good. I will. Jace. Yep. Pulse your Jace. Trigger. 23 to 14. Play a fumarole and attack for 2. So 21, 21 to 14. 14. You can go. Ooh, the bird. Alright. Gonna. Don't want to play into a potential dispel, so we're just gonna play Palace Familiar. Play Eile and pass the turn. Draw. I will loot Jace. Yep. Hmm. Uh, these three cards are all fairly important, I think. And. Uh, I don't think these two are super important. You only have two cards in hand? Two cards. Getting the Eile off the table is important this turn, so we're likely just going to flash back the Impulse here. And given that this is going to be somewhat of a grindy, attrition-y game, I think this card is not as important. So I will discard the Titan Strength, flip my Jace. Yay, I finally did it. I'm so excited. Dreams do come true. <laughs> uh, I will start Fiery Impulse. Impulse the Eilie. Okay, I'm fine with letting that happen. Uh, 22 yeah. to 13. Yep. Then... Normally I might be interested in sacrificing my Palace Familiar, but it kind of brick walls these Thopters. If I can trade with one, I'll be happy. This is a poor order to do things in. I don't know why I did this. Do as I say, kids, not as I do. Um, should have played the Abbot before deciding what to do with Jace. Could have hit sure, and pulse yeah. off of it, but let's hope I don't get burned. Uh, I hit a land. I have not played a land this turn, because I played the Fumarole last turn, I believe. Yep. Uh, so, to not get burned, that's nice. Then twelve. Crack this lane at twelve. Just got Ross in the slow burn. The Zulaport got for it. <laughs> Him in the island of misfit toys. And as much as I would like to cast this now. I th don't think we can afford to do so. And I think this will be better served if we wait for it next turn. So the question is how many Thopters do we attack with? Uh, I think he w normally he would like to trade his Palace Familiar off, maybe find a more impactful card, but the ability to crack back at my Jace to make sure it does not flash back something in two turns might also be Valuable to Mr. Majors. A reasonable assessment. But I think we will have enough to do with our mana that that won't be an issue. So I will attack with both of them to try to apply some pressure. And I'm just going to go ahead and take the trade. Okay. I'm not going to mess around. So you take 1 to 21. And then drain. Yep. 11 to 22. I draw a card off Palace yep. You can go. Sewelport Cutthroat has been putting in some work. And now... Possible I should have killed it with the PN Kieran I'm going earlier. to murderous cut your PN Kieran. Uh, 
And this puts Ross in kind of a tough spot because I could just threaten to kill Jace with my two creatures. Two cards in hand? Two cards. That's fine. Okay. Play this and attack Jace with both these. I'll block the cutthroat. Yep, drain. And Jace goes to one. So 10 to 23. Yep. Once again, we're just past the turn. playing very much an attrition game, and I think the Jace is an important part of it, even if it's not going to do something for a little while. Get the last basic of my deck. Yeah, draw. Uh, so I have... A smoldering marsh, a mountain, two mountains, and a sunken hollow left in my deck, and I have two del three deltas and two mires, so I would like to leave things in that delta can find. My mana is strong enough, so I'll just find a basic mountain with this mire. 23 to 9? Yes. And here I thought I stemmed the bleeding by trading with the... Yeah. So we'll pour cut through. Have two cards in hand? Yep. Are they both rallies? Nope. That's good for me. Unless you're lying. I would never you? lie. <laughs> okay. We'll start this turn off with a treasure cruise. Where? So one, two, three, four, five, six, and. I wonder if it's just better to pay another mana and leave both of our spells in to make our Jace a little better. I don't think we're going to end up flashing back this Painful Truths, especially at 9 life, but I could be wrong. But, eh. I'd rather leave myself more options based on what I draw. Alright. I don't think it's going to resolve, but I'll play quite two company. Uh, am I ahead enough that I can afford to let this resolve and let him possibly rally? There's no Nantuka. There's an Eileen. There's an Eileen, yes. Okay. So that is a big deal. You would get to flip a Jace. I think you would just die if I resolved rally. Hmm. Jace, bag my last thopter, draw a card off of Palace Familiar, gain a bunch of life, and drain me for a few more. That is pretty good. This game is likely to go on for a while, which means they're likely to find a rally at some point. I'm also likely to find more dispels. This is an interesting spot as to whether or not I think I can reliably beat the collecting company often enough to play around the potential for a rally later. If Michael does not have much left after this collected company and I dispel it, I could easily end the game pretty quickly if my cruise is good, especially because of this fumer roll. I think I would like to dispel this. Collected company usually just leads to too much going on. Okay. Probably just baited me though. But I have seen better cruises in my day. I think if I was baiting you, I'd just wait till the end step. Target you to tap as much mana as possible. Okay. Then you can probably assume that I actually want that to resolve. Yeah, I've already played my land this turn, and I th it might just be best to tap out here and fumer roll him for now, and then next turn play these. This is definitely a better use of our mana. Uh, plus on the cleric, yep. I'll take a point to eight. Yep. And attack, switch the power and toughness. So you go to eighteen. So I'll go to eighteen. Yep. You can go. Don't rally me. Uh, play an Antico Husk. Okay, I can deal with that. And... Pass. Not a bad draw. Um, I will probably be cracking one of these fetches before I... No, I shouldn't do that in case I hit a land, right? So I'll... Start the turn with an abbot. Yep. Storm chaser mage. Not bad. Oh, 
play that. Yep. Play a swift spear. Sure. It's a little crew over there. Yeah, I will slip through space the swift spear. Sure. What's this one? Husk. Yep. That's what spears at two three now. Yeah, these are two threes. So one one. Now, do I want to cast this immediately? I think I do, and that means I probably want to crack a fetch. I don't think the damage is that relevant. I have a blue black land, a red black land, and a mountain left. I think your Ross probably needs to just take the most aggressive line possible. Seven. Kind of lost my foothold in this game and basically just trying to find a rally and steal the win. I guess I should have checked if I'm dead to a rally. If you, if I go to seven, you have yeah, you can then husk. One, two, three, four. Five, yeah, six. six. Oh, well, you don't. You don't get one. You don't get equal to the all creatures you have because you either have to. Oh, sure, it's minus one. Yeah. yeah. Well, odds are pretty good. I would be okay. Yeah, I mean, you would also like draw a bunch of cards and gain a million life, so the rally's pretty bad for me anyway. Um, now I will Titan Strength the Thopter. Sure. Uh, that I don't think is very good. And so threes and four. Um yeah. And then mm, probably did this badly too. Probably don't want to attack with the swift spear. So that's fine, like I could slip it and then decide later because I want to be able to defend my Jace. So I've cast uh is it just two spells? Because I cruise. Yeah, start, start cruise three, yeah, three and a three is a four. Yep. Seven. I miss three damage to be able to protect my Jace, but I definitely want to be able to flashback cruise next turn. This is a zero already, so I can make that awkward for him. Uh, yeah, attack for seven. Okay. You're eleven. 11. You can go. Come on deck. What does that do? Not very much, I think, is the answer. <laughs> and you have how many cards in your hand? One. One. Okay. Um, I do think trying to remove Jace's turn is important. Or at least getting it down to two loyalty. So if I cast this bounce the Swiss Spear and attack Jace with both my creatures. Ross can block my husk with his Abbot and force me to sack the Arashian Cleric. So I would be effectively trading Cleric for Abbot and Jace would remain at three loyalty. So that's not particularly good. Or you can just sack your husk to get a counter off my Jace. Which also does not seem good. Um, I think there's a pretty good chance I'm just going to lose if Ross has the opportunity to play his treasure cruise on the following turn. I'm also at 11 life, so that is something to consider as well. Um, I, I don't really know what to do here. Bouncing Abbott seems, for obvious reasons, quite poor. But... Okay, so assuming Ross blocks one of my creatures, there's no way that I can kill his Jace because I have to sacrifice CDC's Faithful to bounce something. So once we've established that, um, I really don't know. 
probably the best thing we can do is just play Sidisi's Faithful, sacrifice itself to bounce the Swift Spear, and then I will send the Arashian Cleric at Jace. Yeah, that seems better. Um, I think I'm willing to sack the Abbot just to be able to cruise immediately. The ability to like find another dispel to protect against a possible rally is very attractive. So, sure, let's uh, throw the Abbot away. Yep. And I'm going to play this. We can decide where we want to thin our deck eventually, but we might not be able to. Draw. Okay, okay. Uh, so I have two, four, six other than the crew, so the Jace will be the seventh. So I don't need to crack this fetch. I know the bottom card of my deck. Given that I've drawn this, it's possible that I do want that the Swift Spear I put on the bottom is okay. So I would. Also, good chance you can just kill me. So you probably just want to go ahead and use as little mana as possible. Yeah. Well, I'm already using seven. The question is whether I want to fetch first. Oh, I see. Uh, just like take a land out of my deck. I mean, I'm basically Probably. I'm dead to rally at this point. Yeah, because you have an extra creature now. So, uh, yeah, I'll just take the land out of my deck. Get a six. Uh, again, I have two deltas, so I think I'll just take the basic mountain and leave the yeah, I'll leave the smoldering marsh in my deck. I need a lot of things to go right. I'll play the Swift Spear first, yep. get the extra prowess trigger. I'll flash back the crews, leaving uh, Titan Strength. Seven, draw three. So that was a reason not to play that land. Am I dead? Uh, yeah, I'll play Swift Spear. Oh, Lord. Oh, expedite storm chaser mage draw a card. Sure. Okay. So have one prowess trigger. Or uh, these have yeah, these, these have, have two. two. This has one. This has one. So uh, this is three, six, seven, eight, nine. Mm -hmm. So if I activate this as well, Lock. three, six, seven, eight, nine. So I get a two. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, and I will switch. Oh, you can't make this attack. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. If you trade, you can. That's yeah. fine. Yep, yep. Again, I don't yep. want to just lose to a creature. Um, well, hold on. So if you, um, if I just block the three, four, and sacrifice, that's better, right? So uh, four, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, you still take nine. Yep. Okay. You we'll just have a husk, then. so you can draw a company. So maybe this attack is bad for me. Am I supposed to just leave back this thopter? Probably. I mean, I can't imagine letting yourself uh, die to company is the right way to do this. Yeah. Uh, so you'd still get to eat. I'd still trade three, four for a ration cleric. You would take eight, go to three. Then you would have to company into reflector mage plus another creature for me to die. Uh, and then the uh, I would have, if you just drew a random creature, I'd be able to basically draw into any spell, right? Uh, if you just draw a random creature and attack, I take it, then you're dead. So you leave two creatures back, and this brings you to one. You would have to block both of these, and I would uh, I would be able to draw to any spell to kill you. This is kind of awkward. This was, my sequence of draws was meh. And going to six was also meh. This is why you don't wantonly crack your fetch lands, kids. You end up in weird situations like this. That's what we'll, we didn't... Sure, speak. yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't think about the husk being able to ever get You've already through. gone through two collecting companies. I honestly think that having... Uh, giving you the ability to just draw a creature into... Oh, I don't have any, many lands left in my deck. One, two, 
Could also draw like Palace Familiar into a creature or whatever. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen, seventeen. So I only have five lands left in my deck. So I'm likely to draw a spell or a haste creature next turn or Abbott into something. Uh, I, mean, I, I think it's this turn or bust. So I mean, you should yeah, probably just so play I'll, defensively. I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave back the Thopter okay. and let you trade Arash and Clark for the Sky. You take eight. Yep. Brings you to three. And I'll sacrifice to two. I don't think you should sacrifice to two. Why? Because it takes away a random creature being a redraw. Because I have two flyers, unless that creature's a flyer. I don't understand. So if you draw like um, a Sedesis Familiar, or um, if you, and you're sure. three, yeah, if you draw just some or like a Jace or a, a Flesh Bag Marauder. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm assuming you have something in your hand. Like okay, yeah, I guess you can do that, but. The, di like, the difference is so small that that I think the the idea of like drawing, I mean I, I guess creatures I can, a redraw I can probably I like is more attractive to me than just thinning your deck five card. Sure. I mean I'm putting myself at like rally or company or bust, which may not actually be reality, but I think that's what I would assume. Although obviously like you attacking with your wandering fumarole is kind of a tip off that you don't really have anything, but yeah, if I just have one spell that could could end up being better. Yeah. Although, not really, if that one spell is almost anything. If it's slip, I'd be rather cast a slip, like Titan Strength I'd rather cast, a removal spell. Could have creatures in my hand. I would, I would like you to, to reveal it. <sighs> Come on, first rally the match. All right, I'm dead. <sighs> <Got him. laughs> All right, we're back here for the conclusion of our Versus series, four-color rally versus blue-red prowess. Um, it's able to... Eke out a 3-2 victory over Ross, just barely, but I think yeah. uh, your, your deck finally came to play in that, that last game. Yeah, well, it came to play in game two, or game three, I can't... Oh, where I just got yeah. absolutely slaughtered. Yeah, th that was the, the one... Cl I felt like you pretty much slaughtered me in the three games you won, uh, although was, some of it was due to my, my deck not cooperating, which could be an issue that's structurally um, with my deck. Sure. So, but you hit me for like 14 on turn 3 or whatever. Yeah, that's definitely the, the appeal of playing a deck like this. It has really powerful draws when you've got the synergies going and your mana's smooth. It's possible that the addition of the third battle land to get a like black splash in the deck isn't worth it. There, there's some tinkering left to be done with the Blue Red Prowess deck, whereas the Rally deck is pretty well tuned, and even though you made significant <laughs> changes to it... I don't, I don't know about my list I, being I don't well know if, tuned. I don't, well, I don't know. Your changes didn't alter the structure of the deck that much. Right. You're still very much doing the same thing, and Reflector Mage and Hylia are very powerful cards. So, uh, Yeah, this, this is kind of what I wrote about on Wednesday. It's like, I'm presenting this deck list, and if you look at the list on paper, it just looks so ugly. It's got like a bunch of threes and twos, and it's just not aesthetically pleasing, but the like most of the cards in the deck do the same thing, or they're kind of redundant, or they, they fill a, a specific role, like you know, Palace Familiar is kind of my Elvish Visionary replacement or whatever. So, and so, so the, the overarching numbers didn't change that much, even if the specific exactly. numbers did. Um, but as far as like new cards for me specifically, I think Reflector Mage didn't play it too. I think we played it three times in that match. Yeah, something like that. And it, I mean, it was good every time. Right. It wasn't quite as good as it was last week. For sure. And, and we mentioned last week that the the green white deck was probably the ideal deck to play Reflector Mage against. Definitely. So. Um, I was impressed with it, with Ailey. She didn't like. She didn't do anything super impressive. I didn't get get crazy. I didn't get to ultimate her with. Uh, usually that only happens like in conjunction with Rally of the Ancestors. But she was just like a, a good body, held the ground, gave me some life, some good insurance, another sacrifice effect. I think uh, she served her purpose and was impressive. Yeah, definitely. And uh, uh, the loop ruler deck when uh, my draws cooperated definitely played out as I expected. The uh, Especially in that last game, you saw the grinding capabilities of the deck. Yep. I cast a Painful Truce and two Treasure Cruises, so I was able to pretty easily outpace your two collected companies. Yep. I'm not sure if one of those collected companies hit one. You you hit one a couple times. Um, I but. yeah, and then one of them got dispelled, so there was yeah. that. But um, yeah, you, you kind of showcased like more of like a almost like a old school Jeskai Black approach with a more aggressive version with like Manus Rider, be it like Storm Chaser Mage and Abbott and. You're kind of doing similar things. You were able to grind, kill some of my creatures. Uh, Pia was was awesome. Just bought you a lot of time. Yeah, that one was was quite good when I played it mm -hmm. uh, on curve and like had a decent curve into it. So uh, I was excited about that one. It played out about how I expected it to. It's possible the deck needs more help providing a fast clock. 
Yep. And I'm not sure if blue and red have the capability to add that to the deck, but you have options. You can splash white and play Monastery Mentor. That card kills really, really quickly. And then you get access to Defiant Strike. You yeah, can... Defiant Strike would be awesome in this kind yeah. of deck. And with Monastery Mentor, you could even play something like Jeskai Charm as a one of, mm -hmm. which is a nice one. You can go upstairs with it or just turn your Monastery Mentor into Super Mentor. Uh, <laughs> kill in one turn, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on. You're kind of... Right now, you're, you're sort of an odd mix between, like, an, an Atarka Red deck and a Jeskai Black deck. Kind of a little bit... A more medium than Atarka Red, but more aggressive than Jeskai Black. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's an interesting place on the spectrum, but I thought Storm Chaser Mage is really powerful. Slip Through Space is really awesome. I think it's it's probably just the best new card in the deck. Yeah, Slip... It, 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 I'm, I don't think we saw it be incredible anywhere where I set up yeah, a big turn with it, but it was the card that closed out that game three where I had this really explosive turn three and it looked like I was out of gas and I might actually uh, give you the time to get back into the game. And I just drew a slip through space and that ended it on the spot. Yep. So that's definitely a card that's important at what it does in breaking through any sort of stalled board or just getting those last few points in. The, it's basically a burn spell in that spot. So it, you look at the deck and there's no traditional burn spells, so you think it doesn't really have that reach, but in reality it does. Yeah, uh, my one big question about your deck is the lack of Culligan's Command. Like, obviously you're splashing the Painful Truce, but is that something you've thought about including into the deck? I've thought about it, but I don't think that card is mana efficient enough for what it does. Sure. Like, all the card advantage spells in the deck are draw threes. So, like, they're very powerful for what they do. Culligan's Command, this sort of mopey two-for-one, good in Jeskai Black when you're trying to play this super long game over the course of 15, 20 turns. Especially I'm, Soulfire Grandmaster. Uh, yeah, and, and has some synergies there. My deck, I'm more looking to play maybe a 8 to 10 turn game and taking 3 mana to get just like a little 2 for 1 or kill the, their small creature that I can do for 1 mana with a Wild Slash or a Fiery Impulse, I don't think is worth it. But I mean, it's, it's a very good card. It's possible that that is a solid one of that I would want. I definitely felt like the deck didn't have enough removal. Like There were certain times where I just wanted to kill a key Jace on your side of the board, yep. kill an early Nantuko Husk before it got out of control, and I didn't have enough Fiery Impulses to really do that. So it's possible I want some number of Wild Slashes in the main or, or to keep in some number of roasts in this matchup, but the the removal count, I think, it needs to be adjusted higher, at least in this matchup. So the, the, there's still a lot of tuning work to be done with the blue-red deck, but uh, despite being 2-3 here, I think uh, with a slightly better tuned list, you'll, you can see, you'll see that reflected in the draws of the deck. They'll be more consistent. I'll be able to more consistently execute my own game plan where it, and not fall behind as often as I did in those games, and the deck will have more success. Yeah, I mean, I think it has a lot of potential. Um, from, from my side, again, I'm just, I mean, there's just so many good options to how to build a rally deck now. I've kind of taken it in a completely off-the-wall path, just not even playing green cards to ever collected company, and the deck still felt fine. So it's just about, you know, tuning your list, finding the, the right key cards, how many copies you want, how many, you know, different kinds of sacrifice effects, draw effects... Yeah, things along those lines. Similar tuning to what I'm doing, you, you're starting from a bit more, more extreme case. Well, you're starting from an extreme case, but you also started with a deck that was already somewhat tuned, so you're starting yep. at, a, at a later stage. Uh, but there, there definitely is still a lot of work to be done with that deck. The power of Reflector Mage is great. I think Eile is very powerful. I was impressed with that card. The incredible amounts of life you can gain with it is actually really impressive. Yep. It, it gains 7 or 10 life over the course of a game pretty easily. Yeah, even just the DC's Faithful is just gain four life. That's not yeah. something to, you know, sneeze and that, at. And that time buys you two or three draw steps. One of them is going to be good, or at least redraw you into another draw step. That one good draw on a collective company or rally is probably going to either pull you back from behind or push you ahead from even board state. And it, the deck snowballs so well. That's, yeah, for sure. That's, that's, that's definitely the best aspect of the deck, yeah. is it goes from kind of treading water to your deck. Yeah, I was I was sort of impressed. There were a couple game times in the games that I lost where I felt like, okay, I've got like a really good hand here, and I think I'll have time to deploy it. And then two turns later, I was still stuck with five cards, and I was dead. Yep. And that that even surprised me, and definitely gave me a re I won't say renewed respect because I already had a lot of respect for the deck, but even added respect on top of what I had. Yeah, I didn't even play a rally that whole match. Yeah, so. It's uh, the deck is capable of just it's being this plan A, kids. <laughs> just, <laughs> just practice your cutting and your shuffle. Just don't have your opponent play the card that the deck is named after in five games. That's plan A. Yeah. Well, pl plan A is actually to mana screw your opponent. That okay. That only happened 
sort of once, but the game I came out fast and you stumbled a bit on the draw, but never really got mana screwed, so unlucky on my part again. You need to get those games where you just don't find a third land ever. Yeah, I just I just can't wait to show the viewers games where we don't play a third land. That's just that's <laughs> yeah. really exciting educational very, stuff. Yeah, very entertaining. Yeah. I assume the viewers are just here to watch me win, right? That's why I'm here. Yeah. Um, anyways, <laughs> let's not let Ross keep on this sadistic tangent. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're checking us out on YouTube, please like, comment, share below. Share your thoughts. Um, tell us what you're playing in the Oath of the Gatewatch standard. Uh, what you'd like us to play in future versus videos. Yep, what you would like us to play. Um, we're both going to be at the next stop in the SDG Tour in Atlanta this weekend. And it's an exciting one. The return of Patrick Sullivan. The best in the business. You missed him. We missed him. Yeah. He's I, back. I feel like over round one, they should play Reunited by Peaches and Herb. <laughs> it's it's only been like a month, but it feels it feels like it's, longer. It's been a long time. And anytime we get to see Patrick Sullivan in the SCG Live booth, it, it's just a win for Literally everyone. For magic. Yeah. Yeah. He's awesome. We're excited about it. I'm going to be playing Rally. I don't know exactly what my list is going to look like, but I'm going to be playing Rally the Ancestors this weekend. Hopefully I will have found a specific list of Blurred Prowess that I feel confident with, but it's possible that I just give in to the dark side and rally myself. Don't, don't feel bad. We're still working on it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for watching.